Welcome to Aruba. Oh my god, I'm so <laughs> RV life is great and all, but resort life is pretty nice. Two thirds of the entire island used to be covered with aloe vera plants. My grandma put it every night on her face. I have a friend who's following me. The freshness is next level. Teal water, palm trees, cactus, flamingos, white sand. What more could you ask for? Last week, we shared how you can still have the Caribbean vacation of your dreams. It is possible to safely travel right now, and we showed you the steps it takes to book and properly prepare for your trip, from COVID tests to mandatory insurance. And today, you'll see why all the extra precautions are worth it when we take you on a whirlwind tour of Aruba. If you're new here, we're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, full-time adventure seekers who traded city life for RV life. We've been traveling through North America and beyond in our Winnebago Navion since 2018 with our three pups, Piper, Ella, and Scout. Our passion is sharing the wonderful and sometimes challenging parts of our life on the road with you, taking you off the beaten path, meeting interesting people, and trying new things. Each week, we bring you along with us to explore unique things about every new state we visit. Okay, next stop. So at this point, they just checked to see if we actually had this ED pass, um, and that was it. Now we're in just like passport control, normal. Mask one, mask two. Welcome to Aruba. We did it. Yeah, so that was like not exactly the way it was written on the Aruba website as far as how this was supposed to go down. As far as we can tell, the health department doesn't seem to care at all about the health app. In fact, she said we're trying to get rid of that. If you're planning to fly to Aruba, you have to have a copy of your negative test. We had it digitally, so it was no problem. If you can't present that, regardless of if you've completed the ED, uh, regardless of if you have the health app, I think they're gonna make you take a test on yeah. the spot. Yeah, there was a long line yeah. for it. Now we're waiting for a rental car, and now the adventure can actually start. Pro tip, always bring your own phone holster. Ta-da. <laughs> Next stop, the Renaissance. Making a lot of stops today. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> Aruba is split into two different properties. We stayed in the adults-only Renaissance Marina Tower, but we also had access to the pool and beach at the Ocean Suites Family Friendly Complex right across the street. You can walk or take their free shuttle, which runs every five minutes. There's one big reason we chose this hotel, which we'll get to in a minute, but another big draw were all the safety protocols they had in place. We loved our stay here and would definitely recommend it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. One of the super cool things about the Renaissance Hotel is that they own a private island and there is a boat that will take you over to that island. So when the water is low enough, the boats come into a canal and actually pick you up right inside the lobby of the hotel. I've never seen anything like that before. They get free boat ride. We haven't even seen the full island yet. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, so in case you haven't figured out from Caitlin's reaction, there are real live flamingos on this island, and that's the big draw. Let <laughs> me cry. They're so beautiful. <laughs> we have to find the food so you can feed them. You can buy food and they'll eat right out of your hand. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Affectionately called Flamingo Island, this tropical playground set less than a mile off the coast is one of the only places on Aruba where you can see the beautiful pink birds. All guests of the Renaissance Hotel have access, and the only other way to visit is to snag one of the very few day passes they sell for a hefty price tag of 125 bucks per person. How much flamingo video is too much flamingo video? I don't think we've hit maximum flamingo. It's incredible. This is so cool. For 25 cents, you can get flamingo food. And 
and then you can go up and feed the flamingos. And they're so funny. The one in the middle was not having it at all. Like I held out my hand full of food and he was like pecking my fingers or some of the food. But it doesn't really hurt, it just kind of pinches a little. What do you- Something for us? Oh my goodness. Something for flamingos. <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whole coconut. <laughs> Caitlin doesn't know it says rum inside. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> that was sneaky. You can't even taste it. It's coconut and coconut rum. <laughs> so what is your first impression of Renaissance Island? I love it. It has that private club feel to it. Lots of great amenities. Uh, some of the cabanas even have slides. It's awesome. And a swing. There's the family friendly side and then there's the adults only side. However, the flamingos are only on the adult side. And all of the towels and the big floats and everything are all complimentary. You just kind of check them out and they want to make sure you bring them back. But that's it. Not a bad deal. RV life is great and all, but resort life is pretty nice. We're doing one of our favorite things to do, a driving tour. We found a audio tour, the audio tour. Only one. <laughs> Only one for Aruba. Uh, so uh, we downloaded the app and it will start as soon as we get to the first stop, which is the California Lighthouse. California Lighthouse serves as a poignant reminder of Aruba's history that's entwined with tales of pirates and shipwrecks. Named for the SS California that wrecked off the coast in the late 1800s, the lighthouse was constructed about 20 years later. Aruba's shoreline is littered with shipwrecks, making it an ideal destination for divers. Driving to the northern tip of the island, you quickly notice the rugged terrain that's vastly different from the white sandy beaches and palm trees of Aruba's capital. The next stop on our driving tour was one of two amazing rock formations dating back to prehistoric times. Wow! These are some of the last few huge rock formations left on the island. You can climb all the way to the top. We're gonna do it. This is so cool. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm good. You got the right shoes for it. <laughs> Almost to the top. Look, the highest iguana. Hi guy, how'd you get up there? It is very windy up here. So now we have a choice. Do we go back the way we came or do we go this much steeper way? What do you think? All right. I'm, I'm going this way. Caitlin says we're going this way. There's a railing there. That little hill flat. Oh my gosh. You gotta watch where I'm going. Caitlin, just look down. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> We're very big stuff. <laughs> I know, Caitlin. I didn't sign up for hiking. <laughs> Tor has brought us to another giant rock formation. This is called Io Rock. Io Rock. And from what the audio tour said, somehow this has something to do with hurricanes. I'm not really sure yet. It's based off of a deity, and I guess the native people who used to live here long, long ago thought that this deity, when she would get mad, she would create storms and pick up water out of the ocean and dump it on the island out of, like, revenge. That sounds like a hurricane. Yeah, and that's where the name comes from. Io Rock. Ra ha hurricane. No, the name of the deity is something like hurricane. We have to look it up. Oh, okay. Update. The name of the deity was Urakane. <laughs> Urakan. Urakan, which is hurricane. Caitlin, I don't know if we signed up for uh, doing this in flip flops. We're going like caving. This is a pretty wild little uh, trail. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, word to the wise. Oh. <laughs> we 
you okay? Yeah. Got the creek. Oh. Yeah, word to the wise. If you're doing this driving tour and you want to do some of the little hikes, we didn't know they were hikes. We would have worn appropriate footwear. We've only been on Aruba for a little over 24 hours, but I'm already in love. I mean, what more could you ask for? Teal water, palm trees, cactus, flamingos, white sand. I'm in. Howard, what have we found? Ooh, I wonder if there's like petroglyphs or something under here. Yep. <gasps> really? Look. Yeah, look. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. Wow, there's a bunch. Oh, I'm so glad that they protected it like this. Wow. So we got through about half of the driving tour um, because something that you should be aware of is during COVID, there are several restrictions, one of which is a mandatory curfew. Which I think is great. A, from a safety standpoint. B, it also forces us to relax and go to bed early. <laughs> I'm totally fine with it. Caitlin likes to go to bed early is what she's trying to tell you. <laughs> I do, but it's really good. Um, so they actually just upped all of the restrictions. Uh, yesterday, there was a press conference and one of those was the new 9 p.m. curfew. So we are gonna go and grab some wine for the room, grab some dinner at a local restaurant that a local gave us the recommendation of, and then call it a night. If you're looking for a delicious, healthy, and super cute spot for breakfast, look no further than the Aruba Experience. Housed in a 19th century Kanuku house built out of interlocking coral, the Aruba Experience Cafe was born from the student-run Aruba Experience magazine. Today, the cafe is mostly operated by students, and the chef is a bodybuilder, so health is a main focus. The menu features traditional Arawak meals, plant-based sauces, healthy smoothies, and you won't find anything fried. Now that we have full bellies from our delicious breakfast, and very healthy, might I add, we are off on another day of exploring. We're taking a break from the sun today because we got a little bit too much yesterday and our first stop is the aloe factory so we're gonna go do a tour and get some aloe for our burnt skin so we started by watching a video about the history of aloe two-thirds of the entire island used to be covered with aloe vera plants Founded in 1890, Aruba Aloe is the oldest aloe company in the world. The free tours are held every 15 minutes and you'll learn about the harvesting process, see how the aloe is quote, filleted from inside the leaves, and learn about all the benefits of this incredible plant. My grandma put it every night on her face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She looked like a glazed donut for 10 minutes, guys, but she never on her face. Next, we headed back inside where we got a sneak peek of the cutting rooms, testing lab, packaging facility, and learned about the various products Aruba Aloe produces. The most impressive is the medical gel cream used by the military and in hospitals around the world to treat severe burns and wounds. The product is selling more than 55 countries and our best buyers are military. Little boy, second to third degree burn, and after a year, no scars at all. Kaylin, what happened? I, I went shopping. It was really cool though. It was super educational and neat to learn about the process that goes into it, how long they've been doing it, all of the incredible medical benefits that there are to aloe. Continuing our driving tour of the island from the day before, we were taken back to the rugged northern coast, where you'll find ruins of a gold mill from the prospecting days, and can witness the intense waves crashing on the jagged rocks. This is just incredible to stand here and watch the power and force of these giant teal waves. It's so epic. One of the island's most well-known landmarks, the Natural Bridge, was destroyed when Hurricane Katrina passed over the island in 2005, but it's still worth a drive out to see what was once the largest natural bridge in the Caribbean. <laughs> we were definitely in the splash zone again, but I wore my waterproof mascara. Well, at least she looks good, right? Our next stop was probably my favorite of the entire tour. I'm so excited. 
We are at the Aruba Donkey Sanctuary. There are about 130 donkeys that still live here on the island. So obviously donkeys are not native to Aruba, a desert island. They date back to the Spanish conquistadors who brought them over, used them as transportation. And then once they were no longer needed as transportation, people started letting them go. Well, they don't exactly thrive here in these conditions. So volunteers kind of collected them all and now they live here and are well taken care of. Are you hungry? Oh, you look hungry. <laughs> you have to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, you're so popular. <laughs> you want to try? Sure. I would definitely do it open hand. Yeah, here we go. I have a friend who's following me. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh. Now there's a traffic jam. Hey. My friend. Hey, friend. It's another beautiful day here in Aruba. We're now two days out from our flight. You now have to have a negative COVID test when you're flying back into the US. So we're heading over to a clinic right now. We're doing the antigen test, which is 50 bucks. And then I think we get the results within about 15 minutes and then we'll be all good to go. We have never had one of the ones stuck all the way up your nose. It is not pleasant. I like the other ones better. The swish swish and you're done. <laughs> mm. It still wasn't bad though. Like in a couple minutes, you feel normal again. Now we have a long walk back, 20 minutes, back to the hotel. There's speakers set up throughout this whole like kind of downtown area. <laughs> so it's playing like, I guess, downtown house music. <laughs> it's like, good morning. Here's a little house music for you to get you pumped. <laughs> and it has been transformed into this amazing art colony of murals from artists all around the world. Founded by Oscar Tito Boulevard, Aruba Art Fair began in 2016 as an event to revitalize the area and connect the people of Aruba. In the beginning, there were about 150 artists and 15 muralists. Today, the project has grown to include dozens of murals spread across San Nicolas, including several that are interactive. Red, blue. Wow. <laughs> Wow. One piece by 25-year-old artist Insane51 represents a man and woman separated by a wall during COVID-19 that transforms when viewed through different color lenses. Absolutely beautiful. It's incredible that they can do that on this giant scale like this. Another, using a free app on your phone, comes alive and you can even include yourself in the mural. Wow. So we just asked him how many murals there are here in San Nicolas and he shook his head and laughed. There are too many to count, but he told us just to walk around and kind of scope them out. This is tile. It's not even paint. Look. Beautiful. to Baby Beach and we saw this off in the distance. Absolutely incredible. The color of the water and these amazing windsurfers. Take me away to Neverland What colors fade my disbelief And make me forget my memories Rent a car you can't afford Put us on the people know that 
your hair out in the wind Put the pedal to the floor Flame your light and take a smoke Put your broken rip off Wait for his arm That was amazing! There were these huge rainbow fish of some kind They're like probably three feet long Yeah, they were like beaching themselves on the rock There's a wide variety of cuisine on Aruba for practically any palate. Local favorites like Kesiana or Funchi are a must try. We even had iguana soup. But for fine dining, one restaurant came highly recommended and we were invited to sample a wide variety of dishes at Elements, an adults only restaurant where local culture is intertwined with unique ingredients topped off with incredible views. We just met Mark, who is the food and beverage director of the resort, but also the executive chef of the Element restaurant itself. And he shared a whole lot about how hard they work to try and be as local as humanly possible. For instance, the lionfish. So the lionfish is a pest. It is something that other fishermen don't generally catch. Well, he pays people to catch it. So that way he can put it on the menu as a local item. I've never had lionfish before. I can't wait to try it. So in addition to the uniqueness of the lionfish, Another thing that sets this ceviche apart is that they add olive oil, which makes it a little bit creamier and less acidic. It's very good. Mm -hmm. The bread. He found a local baker whose lineage, including I think the grandfather, was also a baker, and she bakes the bread for the restaurant. Another thing that they're doing to pull in the local community is all of the greens, with the exception of the romaine, are grown here on the island with hydroponics. Arepas, eggplant machada. So this is normally prepared as a meat dish, but they're substituting it as with eggplant for the meat. So vegan friends out there, this is a vegan dish you can eat, and I bet it's gonna be delicious. They have an entire vegan menu, and they also have several gluten-free options. So funny because everybody ran out to go take pictures right now. <laughs> it's beautiful. Sunset, can you blame us? Let's dig in. day has come. Now it's time to head to the airport and we have our fancy declaration forms here. So these are a must when you're flying back to the U.S. You have to sign and date saying that you had a negative COVID test and then you have to provide your negative COVID test results to them as well. Which can be paper or electronic. Yeah, but this, um, has, but to this has to be paper. Right. And, and actually the hotel already had these printed out and ready for us. We just had to uh, pick some up from the front desk. Mm -hmm. All right, and they tell you to get to the airport three hours before your flight. We're gonna get there about two hours because we have global entry and you do customs and everything here on the Aruba side, which is a big change from when you would normally fly back to the US. Yeah, typically when you're on an international arrival, you know, you get dumped in that big arrivals hall and then you wait with all the other international arrivals. But when we get back to Fort Lauderdale, we're gonna get off at a regular gate and we're just gonna walk off the plane and welcome to America. Yeah, it's gonna be very different. But, all right, you ready? Let's do it. Well, we made it back to Fort Lauderdale and we didn't get to show you any of the process in the Aruba airport, but if you do not have global entry, you need to be there every bit of three hours before your flight. It was packed. And it was about a what, five step process. COVID test, then check in, then the bag drop, passport control, then retrieving your bags, then going through customs and immigration for the United States, redrop your bags, then go through US security, and then you can go to your gate. Next week, we're back to RV life and reunited with our pups, but in true Scout fashion, we're immediately confronted with more health problems. Scout's face, like, does it look swollen to you? Or in the Jeep and take her to the ER. What? Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you never miss any of our weekly episodes. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.